Hi everyone, in this video we'll be discussing oxidation numbers and states. Here are our syllabus dot points. So what is an oxidation state or an oxidation number? It is the hypothetical charge of an atom when we assume that all the bonds are hypothetically ionic. And why is it useful? It's useful because it can help to identify the oxygen and the reductant species in a particular reaction. So as we said earlier, the oxidation state or number is the hypothetical charge of an atom if all of its bonds were ionic. It's important to note that it is the hypothetical charge. It can be useful in helping to identify the oxidant and the reductants. When there is an increase in the oxidation state, we know that oxidation has occurred. And when there is a decrease in oxidation state, we know that reduction has occurred. So that's why it's particularly useful when oil rig is not obvious. And we'll look at examples where oil rig is not obvious. There are a set of rules which you have to memorize to help calculate the oxidation number of a particular chemical species before and after reaction. The first general rule says that atoms that are in the elemental form are going to have an oxidation number of zero. This means that all atoms in the elemental form are going to have an oxidation number of zero. Example of metals include neutral sodium, magnesium, and copper. Similarly, elemental gases such as diatomic oxygen, nitrogen, and chlorine are all going to have oxidation states of zero. For monatomic ions, the oxidation number is equal to its charge. If we look at the metal ions Na+, and Mg2+, they are going to have oxidation states which are equivalent to their charge. Na+, has an oxidation state of plus one, and magnesium has an oxidation state of plus two. Notice that we put the sign before the number when we are talking about the oxidation states. For a non-metal ion, such as the chloride ion and the oxide ion, because each of them have a charge of minus and two minus respectively, they have an oxidation state of minus one and minus two respectively. Like with monatomic ions, the oxidation states of polyatomic ions is going to equal to the charge of the entire molecule. So for example, this means hydroxide, which can be treated as an entire group on its own, will have the same charge as the entirety of the molecule, which is going to be minus one. This is the same for carbonate, which has a charge of two minus, and that therefore has an oxidation state of minus two. Phosphate is three minus with an oxidation of minus three, and ammonium has a charge of plus one, and so it has an oxidation state of plus one. In compounds, the oxidation states are going to add up to zero. Since calcium carbonate is made up each of one calcium ion, which has a charge of two plus, meaning that it has an oxidation state of plus two, and carbonate has a charge of two minus, meaning it has a oxidation state of minus two, the sum of these two ions will add up to zero, which is what we see is the charge of the calcium carbonate compound. So we've just gone through the general rules one, two, and three. But there are rules for specific atoms or periodic table groups. For group one, the oxidation number is going to be equal to plus one in all compounds. And for group two, they're going to be plus two in all compounds. And for fluorine, the oxidation number is equal to minus one in all compounds. However, there are exceptions for hydrogen, for oxygen, and for group seven halides. The oxidation state of hydrogen is plus one in combination with a non-metal. So for example, we have HBr and HCl. Each of them are neutral, meaning that they have an oxidation state of zero. However, because the bromide ion has an oxidation state of minus one, and chloride has an oxidation state of minus one, hydrogen is going to have a state of plus one to neutralize these charges when it's forming a compound. Hydrogen, however, is going to have an oxidation state of minus one when it's in combination with metals and boron. So for example, in NaH, sodium is going to have a oxidation state of plus one, meaning that sodium, to neutralize this, will have a oxidation state of minus one. The oxidation state of oxygen is also going to change. Oxygen is going to have an oxidation state of minus one in a peroxide. Our example here is hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen has a oxidation number of plus one, and oxygen therefore has an oxidation state of minus one. The reason why H is plus one and not minus one is because a peroxide does not contain a metal. Oxygen is minus two in all other compounds except containing F. In this case, the hydrogen is going to be plus one H. And oxygen will be therefore minus two. We're going to look at an example where there is F. 
here we have dioxygen fluoride. Fluorine is always going to have an oxidation state of minus 1 in compounds. And the reason for this is because F, fluorine, is the most electronegative element on the periodic table. Because it is more electronegative than oxygen, oxygen is the one which must accommodate for the fluorine. And therefore, in this case, it has an oxidation number of plus 1. Similarly, in this case where there's tetraoxygen fluoride, fluorine is always going to have an oxidation state of minus 1. However, oxygen must accommodate for that, and therefore it is going to have an oxidation state of plus 0.5 each. The oxidation state of halogens is negative 1 in combination with metal, non-metals except oxygen and other halogens lower in the group. Magnesium, because it is a group 2 metal, is going to have an oxidation state of plus 2. The chloride ions are going to have an oxidation state of negative 1 because halogens have an oxidation of negative 1 when in combination with a metal. In carbon tetrachloride, the chlorine again is going to be negative 1 because it is in combination this time with a non-metal. This means that C is going to have an oxidation number of negative of negative 1 times 4, which is plus 4. The chloride in this case is going to be negative 1 because it is in combination with another halogen that is lower in the group. Because bromine is lower in the group, it means that it is going to be less electronegative than chlorine, and therefore it will have an oxidation state of plus 1 because it has less of a tendency to hold on to the electrons. This similarly occurs when in a compound with oxygen. Because oxygen is more electronegative than bromine, it is going to have a high tendency to hold on to electrons, meaning that it will have the lower oxidation state, which is negative 2. Hydrogen will have an oxidation state of plus 1, and therefore to make this 0, bromine will have an oxidation state of plus 1. Let's look at these examples. Determine the oxidation state or number of each element in the following compounds. If we remember, polyatomic molecules will have an oxidation state which is equal to its charge. Because sulfur has a charge of 2 minus, its oxidation state is going to equal to minus 2. Oxygen is going to have an oxidation state of minus 2 each. Since there are 4 oxygens, the oxidation number of all the oxygens combined is going to equal to negative 8. That means the oxidation number of sulfur is going to equal to negative 2 minus negative 8, which is going to equal to positive 6. In the dichromate ion, the oxidation number is going to equal to minus 2. Therefore, because the oxidation state of oxygen is again minus 2, the total oxidation state for all of the oxygens is going to equal to negative 2 times 7, which equals to negative 14. And therefore, the oxidation number of chromium is going to equal to minus 2 minus minus 14. And then, this total is going to be divided by 2, since there are 2 chromiums, and that is going to equal to 6. The nitrate ion, again, because oxygen is not paired with fluorine, it is going to have an oxidation state of minus 2. So the oxidation total of oxygen is going to equal to negative 6. And so the oxidation number of N is going to equal to negative 1 minus negative 6, which equals to positive 5. Permanganate ion is going to have an oxidation number of minus 1. Again, each oxygen is going to be minus 2, so the total is going to equal to negative 8. And so the oxidation state of manganese will equal to negative 1 minus negative 8, which equals to positive 7. Here we have some trickier examples. The first example is lithium borohydride. If we remember, because hydrogen is in combination with a metal and boron, it is going to have an oxidation state of negative 1. This means hydrogen is going to have a state of negative 1. Lithium, because it is a group 2 metal, is going to have an oxidation state of plus 2. And thus, finally, the boron is going to have an oxidation state of the negative of negative 4 plus 2, which is the negative of negative 2, which equals to positive 2. In this case, magnesium is always going to have an oxidation state of plus 2 because it is a group 2 metal. As a result, oxygen must have an oxidation state of negative 1. This is consistent with the idea that oxidation states of oxygen are minus 1 in peroxides. Let's look at an example of tetraoxygen difluoride. We looked at this previously and said that fluoride, because it is more electronegative than oxygen, 
is going to have an oxidation state of minus 1. If f is equal to minus 1, that means oxygen must equal to negative of negative 1 divided by 4, which equals to 0 0.5. With perchloric acid, now we have a halogen with oxygen and hydrogen. We know that because oxygen is more electronegative than chlorine, it is going to have an oxidation state of negative 2. Because hydrogen is in combination with non-metals only, it is going to have an oxidation state of plus 1. And therefore, chlorine is going to have an oxidation state which equals to the negative of negative 8 plus 1, which equals to positive 7. Let's look at examples of how we can use oxidation state or numbers in order to work out which species have been reduced and which have been oxidized. Magnesium originally has an oxidation state of 0. However, in this compound, which has been separated into its ions, it has now become Mg2+, and therefore has an oxidation state of plus 2. Since it has increased from 0 to plus 2, it must have been oxidized, and therefore magnesium must be the reductant. The same occurs for Cu. Cu originally is Cu2+, but it turns into Cu where it has a neutral charge and therefore an oxidation state of 0. Since the oxidation state has decreased from plus 2 to 0, it must have been reduced and it must itself be the oxidant. Here we can look at the oxidation of vanadium oxide. Vanadium originally has an oxidation state of plus 4 with the oxygen's negative 2 in order to give us plus 2. However, after, it is going to be plus 5 because the negative 4 of oxygen will give it the plus charge. Therefore, the oxidation state increases from plus 4 to plus 5, and an increase means that it is an oxidation reaction. Although we notice that there is an electron on the product side, knowing that this is an oxidation reaction, it is difficult using oil rig to work out which of the species is being oxidized. Next, we can look at an example of the reduction of dichromate. Dichromate originally starts off with an oxidation state of plus 6. This is because the two CRs are going to give us plus 12, and then the seven O's will give us minus 14, which equals to 2 minus. After that, it becomes plus 3. Since the oxidation state has decreased from plus 6 to plus 3, we know that it must have undergone reduction, and again, like with vanadium, Although the electrons are on the reactant side indicating reduction, it is difficult for us to know which species is being reduced using oil rig. Here is our final example of the reduction of permanganate. Manganese initially has an oxidation state of plus 7. Afterwards, it has an oxidation state of plus 2. And because it has decreased, it means that it must have undergone reduction.